continue with the order of worship found on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Surely your goodness and 
mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. forever. <laughs> reading is from 1 Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, 
but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son, Jesus is the good shepherd of your people. Grant that we, we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Amen. 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 After hearing the opening colic for this Sunday and noting the running theme through all the various readings, it should not be too difficult to understand and appreciate why this The fourth Sunday of Easter is called Good Shepherd Sunday. Now I must admit that I proved a miserable failure as a shepherd early in my life. You see, my older brother and I were supposed to be shepherds in our kindergarten Christmas pageant. (laughs) When we arrived at the school in our makeshift shepherd costumes, my brother spotted a couple of classmates who had on these elaborate custom-made costumes and real shepherd crooks. (laughs) Even before getting out of the car, he said, I'm not being in this play. (laughs) And being my older brother, I said, well, if he's not, I'm certainly not. (laughs) And there and then ended my career as a shepherd. (laughs) (laughs) On the other hand, God has been depicted as a shepherd the Good Shepherd, throughout Scripture and into the early church. We are all familiar with Psalm 23, but in Psalm 28 we read, O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. And then way back in Genesis, Jacob, who was later named Israel, blessed Joseph and his sons, saying, The God before whom my ancestors, Abraham and Isaac, walked. The God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day. Bless these boys, and in them let my name be perpetuated. The prophet Isaiah asserted to the Israelites in Babylon, The Lord will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. And the prophet Ezekiel declared, For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. The earliest images of Christ were those of our Lord as a shepherd, caring for his sheep. Jesus speaks of himself in John's Gospel, saying, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Over time, however, those images somehow evolved into images of Christ as king. And we see as the church was adopted by the Roman Empire, the simple shepherd's crook evolved into a gilded crozier with inlaid jewels. The crown of thorns was replaced by the triple tiara of the Pope. The hospitality and shelter of a stranger for a wandering rabbi was exchanged for an ornate palace. And faith in the protection of God the Father was replaced 
by the armed troops of the emperor. But such imperial images are not what truly give comfort to sheep. This is Good Shepherd Sunday. And note that it's not Good Sheep Sunday. <laughs> Historically, sheep have not been regarded as either the smartest or strongest of animals on the planet. They cannot provide for themselves in the wild. Sheep cannot defend themselves against a predator. And they tend to get lost and stray from their flock. What's more, sheep are horrible about destroying the very pasture on which they depend to graze. <laughs> It is no wonder that the cattle ranchers in Wyoming, where my wife and I used to live, were always at odds with the sheep ranchers. What is comforting to sheep is not the army of the empire, but rather it is the assuring voice of their shepherd, the one whose voice they know and trust and will take care of them. As Psalm 23 so poetically states, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And goes on to say the good shepherd leads the flock to green pastures near still waters, protects them from their enemies, watches over them and provides for them abundantly. As we live our lives day to day in the midst of economic hardship and injustice, racial profiling and conflict, political gridlock, extreme weather patterns, rampant gun violence, and senseless war and armament buildup. I'm not getting too political, am I? <laughs> Is there anything that can be more comforting to us and assuring than knowing God, our Good Shepherd, is with us always, through all sorts of conditions, to the very end. This is Good Shepherd Sunday, not Good Sheep Sunday, yet in today's reading in Acts, we are given what at least may have become an idealized view of what it could mean to be Good, shep good Sheep and good followers of our Lord. Those who have been baptized, we are told, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayers. And in Acts, we read that we learn that the early believers shared what they had in common with each other, spent much time worshiping in the temple, broke bread and ate together, were generous of heart, and gave ongoing praise to God. Certainly proof of their goodness was that their numbers grew day by day. But unfortunately, even though today we still make similar promises to live as the early Christians did, each time we renew our baptismal vows, as perhaps you did this past Easter, we often fall short. Yes, we say that we will continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. We pledge that we will persevere in resisting evil and whenever we fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. We even profess to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ, and that we will seek to serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves, <coughs> and that we will strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. Yet, time and time again, we go astray like lost sheep. As followers of Christ, we who claim to be one body remain a divided people, fail to resolve our disputes, and are often, more than not, distracted by selfish desires 
and interests. We no longer seem to exemplify a people who are one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The dwindling number of churchgoers in many communities today bears witness to our shortcomings as the faithful flock of our Lord. Yes, this is Good Shepherd Sunday, certainly not Good Sheep Sunday, but we can be thankful that there is one good sheep, Jesus Christ our Lord, the true Paschal Lamb. As the first letter of Peter informs us, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. You see, in Christ, the good shepherd and the good sheep are one and the same. It is through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we are made righteous, not through anything that we may have done or accomplished on our own. It is with the knowledge that our Lord has sacrificed himself for us and the assurance of his guidance as our shepherd that we, the sheep of his flock, are given the greatest comfort because there is nothing we or anyone else can do to take away such love and care and hope. Theologian and author Walter Brueggemann writes, It is God's companionship that transforms every situation. It does not mean that there are no death valleys, no enemies, but they are not capable of hurt. And so the powerful loyalty and the solidarity of Yahweh are what comfort precisely in the situation of threat. God is indeed our good shepherd, as we have been shown by God's Son, Jesus Christ. But even more than a good shepherd and even a good sheep, Jesus further states, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I once learned that in certain situations in <coughs> ancient Palestine and perhaps even today, when sheep are kept at night in a natural sheepfold where there are no gates or fences, the shepherd would lay down across the opening and literally <coughs> be the gate for the sheep. If a predator approached or if a sheep should try to wander off, the shepherd was there as a physical barricade, a protector to respond. And as the gate, Jesus not only keeps out those who might wish us harm, but readily swings open to include other sheep, new sheep, who may be lost or in need. Jesus is not a gate for exclusivity, but for the safety, care, and good health of all <coughs> God's flock. Yes, this fourth Sunday of Easter is Good Shepherd Sunday. And it is perhaps also a good time to recall the early depictions of our Lord Jesus Christ, not as an imperial king, not as a warrior or a man of light, <laughs> but as one who embodied pure love, a love so strong that he would lay down his life that we might live. Such abundant love and unselfish sacrifice can only make us who are wandering and imperiled sheep more mindful of the life we are created and called to live as followers of our one true shepherd, 
the one who makes us lie down in green pastures, leads us beside still waters, revives our souls, and guides us along right pathways, fearing no evil. And when we truly know and understand why this is Good Shepherd Sunday, and what that really means for us who follow him, then we should also know and understand that because we call our shepherd good, we, his sheep, are also called good and made righteous in his eyes. And as the psalmist before us, we can then say with confidence of our Lord, our good shepherd, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the People is Form 6 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 395. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. Remembering especially in the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Philip's in regard, and for all people in their daily life and work. For, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, <coughs> for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jose, our bishop. 
and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. Remembering especially this parish and our discernment process and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy to strength. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live to serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer for our parish servant.
our ad was posted in the Episcopal News Service and uh, ran through April 13th. We did receive some applicants. However, they were not approved by the bishop. So we are back to square one. So the ad will run again, begin, it's beginning tomorrow for four weeks. So please continue to keep this beautiful little church in your prayers. Thank you. In the meantime, uh, our M&M &M group has some more trips going. M&M, &M, for those who don't know, originally stood for mature and motivated. Motivated we are, mature we're having a hard time with. So we've opted for magical and mischievous. So our, our group went to Strawberry Hill last week and had a, had a great time collecting strawberries and veggies and uh, having a nice lunch. This week, tomorrow, uh, sorry, Tuesday, we're going to Waynesville. I know you all remember Barbara Malden. She lives in, in Waynesville and she's gonna be our tour guide we're going to drive over and meet her, have a little tour, some lunch, and do a tad of shopping and get back at a reasonable hour. But uh, Barbara can't wait to, to see everybody. The sign-up sheet is still in the, in the bulletin board in the parish hall. I hope you'll join us. It, it should be great fun. Barbara is just a love, and we miss her. Um, another trip we have planned is for next week on Wednesday the 10th. We're going to go to Daniel Stowe Botanical Gardens in Belmont. Um, where we'll see a perfect time of year for the early, the late spring perennials uh, to go. We'd rather go now than in the hot summer. So if y'all would like to join us, we'd love to have you go. We're going to leave a little early. We're going to leave at 9 from here. Um, we're going to drive to Belmont, drive to the gardens, and then we're going to have lunch with Wendy Field, who's also someone who has unfortunately had to, to leave us and, and go to be closer to family. She and Jim. Randy are in Charlotte, but they're going to meet us there at the gardens and have lunch with us. So it should be a, a, a couple of fun weeks with lots of things going on. Um, this is the sign-up sheet for that. I'll put it up in the parish hall when we get there. But please, please, if you have a chance, come with us. They're, they're, the trips are fun. They go by quickly because we chat and laugh and just have a great time. Um, so I hope you'll join us. Thank you. So tonight and next Sunday, will be um, our five o'clock evening today services. So if you are interested in experiencing that service, um, those two will be the last of the season um, for this year. And then on May the 14th, we will have our first wild church service, which will be over at the Sisters, um, at the Sisters Preserve. And I'm very much indebted and thankful for the work of Patricia Askew, who has helped um, she will be leading that first service and also has helped comprise the liturgy for us and um, to help with the details um, of the service and we're very excited about it. If you have questions about the service, it's basically a worship in God's creation. Um, so we will be walking into the woods or as um, the a, a lot of the wild church um, literature likes the word saunter. Um, because it's the word that the pilgrims during the Middle Ages would use to describe their journeys of pilgrimage. So we will saunter into the woods and worship the Lord in his creation. Um, so hopefully um, you can join us and certainly spread the word. You'll start seeing posters at Ingalls, at Lord Market, at some of the other businesses in the area who have agreed to um, allow us to hang them up. So Tell your friends, tell your coworkers, or in different opportunities you're in the community um, about the service because it's certainly a lot of us do feel closer to God when we're in the wild and when we're in His creation, and not just necessarily um, in the church building. So hopefully we will be able to speak to people who may not feel as comfortable coming here on a Sunday morning, but would feel comfortable being outside. And it's at 5 p.m., yes, at um, the sisters um, on the 15th, 14th. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more uh, announcements? Um, I would like to say the new uh, forward day-by-days are in the back. They're large 
version and the small version. So this is May, June, and July. Pick one up if you'd like that one. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. <laughs>
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia.
These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
together on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as many members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as you have been fed at this table, go now to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go set free the imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And the blessing you receive from the Creator, the Son, and the Spirit go with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.